All right, so we're gonna move on to our next method, which is Venn diagrams. My guess is that you've seen a Venn diagram at some point in your life. Maybe you've made one on your own, maybe you haven't, but we're gonna do that. So a Venn diagram is a picture that represents the outcomes of an experiment. It generally consists of a box that represents the sample space, S, together with circles or ovals. The circles or ovals represent events. So I drew you your general two-evented Venn diagram here. So the entire box represents the sample space. We've got one circle representing event A, one circle representing event B. And I wanna just flip over to, if you go to the back side of the formula sheet I gave you, you'll see the, the back side has a breakdown of the different areas of the Venn diagram. And I put this here because initially when you work with Venn diagrams, it can be pretty confusing which part of the Venn, which part of the circles actually represent different um, events. So let's play this out. If we call this event A and this event B, all right, this football shaped thing right there in the middle would represent A and B. And a lot of times you'll hear me refer to this as the football. So in an and, I'm sorry, in a Venn diagram, the and, that, that important probability that we have to find for formulas one, two, four, and five, the and is the football, okay? Over here, if I were to put, well, let me go back this up. If I was to put my pencil here, you can see my, my pencil is in the circle that contains event A, and it's also in the circle that contains event B. It's in both. All right, if we go over here, I call this the left football. And these are not technical terms. If you go ask another st stats teacher, if you refer to the football and the left moon, they're gonna think you're crazy. So uh, these are just my terms. They helped me when I was going through this. If I talk about I am in event A and not in event B, you can see right here, if I put my pencil, right, if this is the A circle and this is the B circle, my, my pencil is in the A circle, but specifically not in the B circle. Now, event A all by itself is this entire circle. All right, and I really wanna stress this. It's the left moon and the football. I get it all the time where students think this is event A. This is A and specifically not B, right? Because this is everybody in A, but they're specifically not in B. This is just everybody in A. Because if you're dealing with event A, you might just be in A or you might be in both, okay? So there's event A, that entire circle. All right, on the flip of that, look at here's event B this entire circle, all right? And then you can see where did they overlap? Right there at the football, all right? If I put my pencil here, right, I'm in event B, I'm in the B circle, but I am not in the A circle. So I'm in A complement and B, all right? Here's the or, right? So we've got, I'm in A, just A, just B, or both, all right? Or all three of those parts put together, right? Um, so if we head over here, and I'll, I'll circle back to this one, if we head over here, if you see the grayed out area is out here, I call it out in the rest of the universe. I, my pencil is not in A and it is also not in B, okay? If I'm in either of the um, moons, left moon or right moon, it means over here, I'm in A but not in B, or I could be in B but not in A, right? So starting to really feel out where all the different pieces of a Venn diagram are, it can be a little overwhelming at first. I, I totally get that. You might not be there yet, but we're gonna get there. So the four main pieces of any of this is I'm in both, I'm in one, I'm in the, where's the other, sorry. <laughs> okay, let me start this over. I'm in both, I'm in one, I'm in the other, or I'm in neither, okay? So since this is a little jumble, because there's eight of them here, let me show you what I'm referring to on our blank Venn diagram. Here's my pencil, I'm in the left moon, I'm in one event, or I'm in the other event, or I'm in both events, or I'm in neither. So let me put this here. This is one event, the other event, this is both events, and out here is neither event. And I'm gonna erase this in a moment because I'm gonna put in the numbers for our particular problem. But I just want you to hear, if your pencil's here, you're in one, maybe you're just in the other, maybe you're in both, maybe you're in neither, okay? And I should say one event only, the other event only, both events, neither event. 
These are your four options. And the four numbers that you put in here, if they're decimals, they're gonna to need to add up to one. If they're frequencies, they're gonna to need to add up to your sample size. All right, and I know that's a lot to take in. We're gonna practice it through this problem. So I'm, I'm gonna erase this because I need to put in the numbers for our particular problem. All right, so here we go. So 40% of the students at a local college belong to a club and 50% work part-time. 5% of the students work part-time and belong to a club. Draw a Venn diagram showing the relationships. Let C be the event that a student belongs to a club and PT be the event that a student works part-time. So you can see there are three decimals they gave us right there, right? Three relative frequencies. I heard 50%, I heard 5%, and I heard 40%. So let's see if we can do this. Now the two letters that they're giving us, they're asking us to use club and part-time, okay? So here is your, your general attack plan. Start from the football and work yourself out. So if I was to put my pencil here, this represents students that are in a club and work part-time. And this might be you, right? It, the variables here are whether or not you belong to a club and whether or not you work part-time. You're gonna answer yes or no to either of those options, right? And then we're gonna put you into one of these four categories. You, you do both, you just belong to a club, you just work part-time, or maybe you do neither. And if I were able to help somehow survey the entire class, I could figure out where you fall in to each of those four subcategories, right? Just do clubbing, just do part-time working, you do both, or you do neither. But let's take a look. If I put my pencil here and I'm in the football, this is the and, these are the folks that do both, and I have that 5% do both. 5% of the students work part-time and belong to a club, and I can see the and there. So I'm gonna put this as a decimal, 0.05. I have a lot of little dots there because I've been tapping my pencil. All right, then let's, let's work ourselves out. 40% of students belong to a club. And here's the most common error. I get this every year. I'm gonna mention it. We're gonna fix it and try not to do this error. I always get students telling me this, that they'll put the 40% here. And let's go back to what I was talking about with our Venn diagram area um, graph. If you're talking about belonging to a club, it's this entire circle, All right, Here are the folks that belong to the club. These are the folks that belong to a club and don't work part-time. That's a different subset. I want all of the folks, the left moon and the football, this needs to total out to 40% because that's what area represents the folks that belong to a club on campus. So I need this entire circle to add up to 40%. And right now you see it adding up to 45%. So what I need to do is I need to take that total of 40%. This should total out to 40%. I need to subtract the 5% that I've already accounted for. So I'm gonna take 0 0.40 and subtract 0 0.05 and find out that it was really 35% that were only working, excuse me, only belonging to a club and not working part-time. So I'm gonna say this again because it's really worth repeating. Like I said, this is the most common error I get. 40% of students belong to a club. So on a Venn diagram, it means that this entire circle has to add up to 40%. All right, I didn't say 40% of students belong to a club and don't work part-time. I just said the club circle should add up to 40%. So when you're talking about an event it's an, in its entirety, we need the entire circle. If I was talking about belongs to a club and does not work part-time, then I would be talking about the left moon. But that's not how this was phrased. It just said club. So it's gotta be the entire circle. So let's play that out again, but now let's do it with the folks that work part-time. So you see here, 50% work part-time. So the most common error I get, again, it's students telling me 50%. And that's a problem, because really what you're telling me right now is that 55% of students are working part-time. Because again, if we're talking about the part-timers, it's this entire circle. Right? The right moon and the football, not just the right moon. So this entire circle has to add up to 
And if we take a look right now, it's adding up to 55%. That is a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take 50% and I'm gonna subtract out the 5% I've already accounted for and find out that the number over there really should have been 0.45. All right, so let's start to talk about who these folks are. So far, of my students that I've talked to, 35% belong to a club and don't work part-time. 45% work part-time and don't belong to a club. And 5% do both. Or I could say here, 40% belong to a club and 50% work part-time. All right, so again, if I'm talking about the part-timers, all of these folks. If I'm talking about the clubbers, all of these folks, the entire circle. If I want to be more specific and say club, but not part-time, I'll go to the left moon. If I want to be more specific and say part-time and not club, I'll go to the moon. Okay. Now, the other thing is we got to figure out the neithers. This sample space has to add up to one. And as of right now, if I add the three numbers, I'm looking at 0.35 plus 0.05, plus 0.45, I'm looking at 85%, all right? And these have to total out to one. There's always gonna be four numbers in these Venn diagrams, and they have to add up to one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these three numbers, they added up to 85%, I'm gonna subtract it from one and find out that 15% of my students did not belong to a club and did not work part-time, all right? So again, if the two categorical variables here are whether or not you belong to a club and whether or not you worked part-time, you fit into one of four categories. You either belong to a club, don't work part-time, work part-time, don't belong to a club, you do both, or you do neither. These have to add up to one. This is your Venn diagram, okay? Once you get your Venn diagram set up, then you can start answering probability questions. So here we go, let's start to to pick these apart one by one. So if a student is selected at random, fine. All right, the probability that the student belongs to a club. So I see P and I need some parentheses. And for right now, I, I know the letter, I'm gonna put the C, okay? Now, we'll put the equal sign. Once you close off that right parentheses, you owe me an equal sign. So for club, if I want the entire event club, it's left football, and moon, right? I want this entire circle, left football and moon. So let's take a look at it. If I do left football and moon, or I do this entire circle, that answer is 40%, okay? So it's not just the 35%, it's 40. I got these folks belong to a club, and these folks also belong to a club. It's just that these folks also happen to work part-time. All right, for part B, I'm seeing probability. And then we're gonna go part-time. So I want P, and my, my crap in the parentheses is just the letter PT. Once you've figured out what letters or words go in here, let's put the equal sign, okay? Now, for part-timers, all right? For part-timers, I want the entire circle over here on the right side. So I want right moon plus football, all right? So if I'm looking at part-timers, oops, let me get that back there. Part-timers, I want right moon plus football, or another way of saying it is I want this entire circle. So that would be 45 plus 5%, or we would do 50%, okay? All right, so let me scooch this up, and then we'll try and keep that Venn diagram in view as long as we can, and then we'll, we'll keep going back and forth. All right, so the probability that a student belongs to a club and works part-time. So I want the probability of club and part-time. Okay. Now I said this out loud, but it's, it's worth repeating. So I'm gonna put a little note here that in a Venn, the and is equal to the football. Okay. And again, that's my term. I call it the football. It kinda looks like a football if you look at it. Um, so I call it the football. So if I ever want the and, Right? and I put it over here. It's the football, so go with that football. And if we're taking a look, all right, so the football looks like it is, we've got 0.05, okay? 
And these were all given to us in relative frequencies, so we don't have to worry about anything. They're already numbers between zero and one. All right, so continuing on with that, this says, what is the probability that a student belongs to a club given that the student works part-time? All right, so there's a buzzword popping up. So let's see what we got. I've got the phrase given that. All right, and then I think, well, I gotta go to my formulas. All right, so let's take a look at where we are on this side of things. We're now dealing with a Venn diagram and I need to use formula two. And I wanna be super clear, I specifically cannot use formula three. I have no idea if these events are independent so I cannot use formula three yet, but I'm talking about a conditional probability so I can use formula two. And taking a look at the way they asked it, they said, what's the probability that a student belongs to a club given they work part time? So I'm gonna use the letter C here and I'm gonna use PT here. So instead of A and B, I'm gonna write club and part-time. And instead of the probability of B, I'm gonna write the probability of part-time. So let me go play that out. I want the probability that a student belongs to a club, given they work part-time. That is gonna be the probability of club and part-time over the probability of part-time. So with these conditional probabilities, it's always like a two for one deal because you have a probability in your numerator and a probability in your denominator. So you gotta do an extra number crunch here, which is fine, but let's look at it. All right, club and part-time. Where does the and live? In the football. So my numerator is 0.05, okay? Now I want you to just get ahead of me for a moment. For my denominator, do we think we're gonna put 45% or do you think you're gonna put 50%? So try and think about that. I want the probability of part-timers. Do you think I'm gonna put 45 or am I gonna put 50? All right, if I want the probability of a part-timer, all right, so I want that event PT, right? That would be this entire circle. So I need right moon, I'm sorry, yeah, right moon and football. All right, so I need 50% down here. When I do that ratio on my calculator, oops, excuse me for that noise, we got 0.05 divided by 0.5. We're looking at about 10%. Okay, we're starting to cruise. Here we go. All right, let me scooch this up and let's start to try these. All right, the probability that a student belongs to a club or works part-time. All right, so if I hear that or, all right, and I'll actually highlight that since that's a buzzword. Or, I go over to this, this flow chart. It's not quite a flow chart, but we can cross things. I know I'm Venn diagram and I need or. All right, so fantastic. I have club or part-time. We're gonna go probability of club plus probability of part-time minus the probability of club and part-time, right? So now I'm doing Venn diagram with formula one. So, so far I've done Venn diagram formula two. Now we're doing Venn diagram formula one. So as we go through this chapter, you're starting to see me use these different methods with these different formulas. And I just use them depending on what's asked of me. For, for example, eight, it's all Venn diagrams and we're gonna run through a bunch of these formulas. For example, seven, it was a table problem and we ran through a bunch of these formulas. When we get to example nine, you're gonna have a tree diagram and we're gonna run through a bunch of these formulas. All right, but we're gonna specifically run through this one. So we got C or PT, so C, PT, C, PT. Let me pump this out and we've got the probability of club or part-time. It's the probability of club plus the probability of part-time minus the probability of club and part-time. All right, so we got some numbers to crunch. Here we go. All right, before I write these, I want you to think, what is the probability that a student belongs to a club? Use the Venn diagram to think about that. Is it 35 or is it 40? What is the probability that a student works part-time? Again, get ahead of me. Is it 45 or is it 50? What's the probability that they do both? Where's the overlap? All right, so let's start with club. Then we're gonna go to part-time. And then we've done the and a few times. So let me scooch this back down. So if I want the probability that a student belongs to a club, I want this entire circle. All right, so I want the probability that belong to a club is 40%. It's both of these added together. 
All right, again, this is clubs that don't work part-time. This is clubs that work part-time, but all 40% of these students actually belong to a club. So 40% on the club front. This entire circle is part-timers. All right, so we're gonna go 50% on the part-timers. And then we know that the overlap is 5%, okay? So as we go through this, we've got 40 plus 50 minus 0 0.05. And when we crunch that number, we get 85%. Okay. And that number might seem a little bit familiar to you. Um, and it, that goes back to how we got this 15% in the first place, right? I added these three numbers up, club only, both, part-time only. We added those three numbers up and we got 85%. We subtracted that from one to get the neither category of 15%, but, but these three areas added together, the left moon, the right moon, and the football, that is your or. All right, so if we go back to this little graphic, right, the or is left moon, right moon, and football. So if you're on a Venn diagram and you know where the or lives, it's these three numbers added together, you can just kind of shortcut to the end right there. If that doesn't work for you, if you have trouble remembering the shortcut, then don't worry about it if you're not there yet. No biggie. This formula will always work, right? It's that formula number one. You get that for every single problem. So what I like about the formula is that it works for all three methods. And when you get more comfortable with Venn diagrams, then you can say, or you might recognize that anytime you have the or, you just need to add those three numbers together. It's, it's like when we were on the table problems with the conditionals. Once you become more and more comfortable with table problems and conditional probabilities, you can actually cut to the chase a little bit faster, but the formulas always work, okay? All right, so let's see if we can start doing some more of these. So for part F, this is saying, what is the probability that a student works part-time but doesn't belong to a club? So student works part-time but doesn't belong to a club. I wanna look at that conjunction there, right? That's the not, right? It's hidden, but it's the not. So I want the student works part-time, but doesn't belong to a club. So as we look at this probability, because again, I've stopped circling these, but these probability words are in there, right? I need P and I need some stuff in parentheses, works part-time and does not belong to a club. So we've got C complement. All right, so PT and C complement. All right, now if we refer back to our Venn diagram, we want part time, but we want C complement. So they're written in the opposite order here, right? I want part time and C complement. So I'm looking at these guys. I want them to work part time. I wanna be in the right moon, but I don't want to be part of the club. So I want the right moon there. So if I go back to our particular problem, and let me scooch up again and get our Venn diagram. All right, so if I put my pencil here, these are the folks that work part-time, but I'm not in the club circle, right? You see I'm out of that event space, so it's those 45% of students that I'm interested in. All right, so I will just put 0.45 here, okay? All right, so moving to part G, right? It's the probability, okay? You belong to a club, but does not work part-time. So there's that buzzword. I see a compliment hanging out in there. All right, so the probability that a student belongs to a club, but does not work part-time, so I want PT complement this time. Okay, we can do this. So I want to be in the club circle, but specifically not in the part-time circle. So if I go back down to my Venn diagram and we take a look, if I put my pencil here in the left moon, right? All of these folks in the left moon, they belong to a club, but they specifically do not belong in inside the part-timers group. So that's 35%. All right, so I'm gonna put 0.35 here, okay? All right, so as we start to go through this, let's, let's keep on going, let's look for buzzwords, right? So that the, I want the probability that a student does neither. 
means you don't belong to a club, nor do you work part-time. Well, if you're doing neither, that means you are C complement and PT complement. I mean, that's literally what it means. I don't belong to a club and I don't work part-time. All right. So if we go to our Venn diagram, the folks that are doing neither are always the ones in the outside of the universe. What, who fits in the outside of that box? All right, and if we look at our particular number, all right, let me scooch it back down again, you can see that we had 15% of our students doing neither. Because again, when we take a step back, there's two categorical variables here, right? Do you belong to a club or not? And do you work part-time or not? So I can fit you into one of four overall categories. You do both, you do neither, you belong to just a club, or you work just part-time. So you have to fit into one of those four pieces of the Venn diagram. All right, is working part-time mutually exclusive from belonging to a club? All right, so you see mutually exclusive. There's the buzzword there. All right, for mutually exclusive events, we want to pick up formula five. And ultimately, we will answer yes or no. Yes, these events are disjoint, or no, they are not. Or I could say yes, they are mutually exclusive, or no, they are not. Let's see if equality holds. If the probability of A and B is equal to zero, then the answer will be yes. If the probability of A and B is any, other, any number other than zero, then the answer will be no. So I'll get my answer either way. So we've got the probability of C and PT. Is that equal to zero? All right, well, let's, let's figure out. Where does the and live? The and on a Venn diagram is always in the football. So let's go find the football one more time. Can't find that thing enough. All right, so the football, we had 5%. So I'm gonna go plug that into my formula. All right, so doing this, is 5% equal to zero? No. So what is the answer to this question? No, these events are not mutually exclusive. So no, working part-time is not mutually exclusive. from belonging to a club. All right, students can do both. You can work part-time and belong to a club on campus. No, no harm there. All right, is working part-time independent from belonging to a club? Well, if we're talking about independence, then I can use one of these two formulas. And I told you my preference, I usually use the and, just to kind of be, um, just to not play into my bias. I'm gonna use the, the um, conditional one just to show you what that looks like. So I will do um, club given part-time equaling club, okay? So I'm gonna use A, I'm gonna swap that with club. For B, I'm gonna do part-time and here it would also be club. And the reason I'm gonna choose that order is because in part D, we calculated this probability. So I already know the probability of um, belonging to a club given I worked part-time. If I didn't know part D, I just want you to hear, you could do it the other way. You could do part-time given club equaling probability of part-time, that's fine. So you have a couple of options. I just wanna be efficient and use the number I got in part D. So I'm gonna put a C here and I'm gonna put a PT here, which means I'm gonna put a C here as well. All right, so let me try it using the conditional probability formula. So as we look at this one, let's try and play this out. So I want is the probability of C given PT equal to the probability of C. All right, so this is using formula three, all right? So if I want to do it this way, well, the probability of C given PT, I found that probability in part D, that was 10%. And the probability of belonging to a club was 40%. Are those two numbers equal to each other? No. So then my answer here is no. The events are not independent.
and really I should say more than events, I'll, I'll erase that in a moment. I just want you to hear, I would say, working part-time is not independent from belonging to a club. Now, just so we can go through it the other way, if I used formula four, this would be the probability of PT and C. Is that equal to the probability of PT times the probability of C? On the upside, we calculated all of these. I got this number in part C, it was the football. Right, I got this number in part B, we had 50%. I got this one in part A, this was 40%. If I multiply these numbers together, let's see what we get on the right side here. We have 50 times 40, we have about 20%. So I'll put my little question mark until I saw it. solve it. Is 0.05 equal to 0 0.20? No, they are not, right? Therefore, the events are not independent. And so I'm going to put some context here because whenever we have a word problem, we want to put context. So no working part time. Is not independent. From belonging to a club. So working part-time, not independent from belonging to a club. Okay, so with all of that, let's just kind of take a step back, take a bit of a breather, because that's a lot to take in. But I do want you to see that on this problem, we were on the Venn diagram. We used formula one, formula two, formula three, four, five. So I went through all of them with this Venn diagram problem, okay? Um, on the Venns, the, the important takeaways, the things I want you to remember, is that the football is the and, okay? If I'm talking about event A, I want all of the circle. Please don't give me just the, the left moon, all right? This is A and B complement. All of this is event A, all right? So we have the left circle is event A, the right circle is event B, the or, you can find the or if you add left moon, football, right moon, all right? The complement, the stuff out in the uh, rest of the universe, the neither folks are out here. All right, and another thing I just want to point out about Venn diagrams, all right, I want us to take a look at Venn diagrams, and I want us to play out formula one. Okay, so I want to just show you for a bit, why does this first formula work um, when you're looking at it through a Venn diagram lens? So I want to show you how the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus their overlap. We saw this play out with a table, but I think it's kind of cool to see it with a Venn also, just so you have that visual. So let me draw two Venns, okay, we'll go A, B here, and then I want to, oops, that's not quite large enough to mirror it, we'll go A, B here. All right, so if we're working through this, if I'm talking about A or B, right, that's the first part, I want to look on the left side, it says, probability of A or B. And we talked about this um, in that last example, but A or B is left moon, football, right moon. Okay, so if I wanted to shade this in on this Venn, we've got left moon, football, right moon. Okay, so I've got that part shading in. If you can't quite see it, let me sketch it just a little bit more. Those three parts. All right, so watch this. Probability of A. I think you'll give me the probability of A is all of this. I'm gonna to add to it the probability B, so now I'm gonna shade all of this. All right, think about this. When I shaded A and when I shaded B, what did I shade twice? Are you with me that I shaded the football twice? Because the football is in event A and it's in event B. So you see I've shaded this twice, it's overrepresented. So I wanna subtract it once for balance. So I'm gonna subtract out one of those shadings so that I'm left with A or B. Right, so that's why we keep subtracting out the overlap because it gets counted in A and it gets counted in B. So it gets counted twice, so we subtract it out once for balance. The only time you don't have to subtract it out for balance is if formula five is true. So if events are ever disjoint, if the probability of A and B is zero, then this just goes away. And that's part of why we call it the addition rule. So for ORs, we're just adding probabilities and subtracting overlaps. If there are no overlaps, there's nothing to subtract out, which is awesome. All right, so next up we got tree diagrams. 
We're going to look at these formulas now in the lens of a tree diagram.